that now we, we're talking about the short run. And in the short run, we talk about a few years. Any output fluctuation in the short run is attributed mainly to changes in demand. So what we need, if we want to understand this sort of fluctuations, then we need to, to think about demand. In the short run, economists or macroeconomists focus on the interaction between these three variables, production, income, and demand. The fluctuations that happen in the short run happen mainly because of changes in demand. So let's uh, just assume a scenario where demand drop for whatever reason, demand fall. How firms going to react to that? Obviously, they will cut their production. So when they cut their production, that means they lay off workers or they close production lines. That means less income. Less demand means less production means less income. First of all, so changes in demand for goods would lead to changes in production. Firms and businesses will react to changes in demand. If demand falls, that means production we expect in the next period, production to fall as well. If demand increases, we expect production to increase. Firms and businesses react to demand. Remember, we're talking here about the short run. They, they make their plans based on what they expect to be able to sell. So if they can't sell all of their production, obviously they have to adjust their plans. If they were able to sell all of their production, but there was still more demand or the demand was higher, then again, they need to adjust their plans next time and they need to produce more to meet that demand. The, 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 the production side or firms and businesses have to adjust their plans according to demand. Again, if demand falls or uh, any changes in demand, that will lead to changes in production. Changes in production they will lead to change, changes in, in income because if businesses wanted or facing higher demand where they need to expand their production, that means they will create more jobs. They will hire more workers. So that means higher, more income or income will increase. Or the other scenario, if businesses have uh, the demand for goods uh, had fallen, so that means they need to cut jobs as well. So cutting jobs here means less income. So that will affect income. And again, that means another cycle. So that means will affect demand for goods as well. This sort of fluctuation happened in the short run. This cycle or this adjustment happened in the short run. What we're looking at here is the US GDP components. We want to understand the main components from the demand side. Remember last time when we discussed how we calculate GDP, we said we can look at the GDP from the the production side, so you can calculate the GDP as a sum of uh, value of all final goods or the sum of all value added, so that you're looking just from the production side. Or you could also look at the GDP or calculate the GDP by looking at the income side. So if you sum up all incomes in, in an economy, so basically you uh, will calculate the GDP. Because demand is the main driver of any fluctuation that happened in the short run, we'll focus on that side on demand side. What we see here is the first line is the growth rate in GDP, the US GDP, this is real data. This is the growth in different quarters. So in the fourth quarter in 2018, growth rate was 1.1. In 2019, the third quarter was 2.1. So I want to decompose these or to look at the main components from looking from the expenditures or from the income side. The main component here is consumption expenditure. So as you can see here, 68.1% of real GDP in the United States in the third quarter was actually coming from consumption. So what is consumption here? Consum consumption basically is what, what households spend on goods and services. So this is like a major component. If you understand what determines consumption, then we would understand what determines a very important component of the GDP from the demand side. Consumption is very important. So as you can see here, it's actually from, if this is 100%, this is the share of GDP, it's 68.1 in, in the third quarter 2019. The second component is investment. If a firm or a, a business try to expand or buy a new machine, uh, etc. So this is sort of investment. Or if you're buying like a kind of new built house, etc. So for investment purposes, if you compare this to consumption, it's still a big portion, but it's not as big as, as consumption. The third component is government spending. What government spend on goods and services, so you exclude government transfers. Not a very small component, it's still important uh, component in the US, but mainly 
consumption is the, the largest portion here. Net exports, exports minus imports. Exports, when you sell, so you sell the UK products abroad. Imports, when you buy products from abroad. The difference between exports and imports, that's what we call net exports. If exports are larger than imports, that means you have surplus. If imports are larger, that means you have a deficit. But anyway, so what we see here is, in these columns, is just how much they contributed in terms of growth. But what I'm actually really keen to look at here is this component, these, how, how much they contribute to the to total GDP. So consumption, 68.1% of, uh, of the US GDP in 2019 quarter, in the third quarter in 2019, is actually coming because of consumption. If that's what households spend on goods and services. I try to collect similar data for, for the UK. This would give you like just how the contribution to growth for each component, but I would imagine that consumption is, is a large uh, component as well. What we're going to do now then, we're going to try to understand what determines these components? So consumption, investment, uh, government spending, net exports, how these four components can determine the uh, equilibrium output. But before we start, I just want to explain in economics, as a macroeconomist, you usually uh, use three tools to explain any idea. Use algebra to make sure that the logic is correct, what you're trying to, to build is correct. The, your assumptions and the, your conclusions are correct, so use algebra for that reason. And use graphs to show the intuition and words to explain this. So that's what we're trying to do now. Try to start with algebra first, and then we'll move to how we can represent this using graphs, and then how we can explain this using words as well. One more thing to, to keep in mind, whenever you have a model, there are two types of variables in your model. One which we call endogenous variable. So one type which we call endogenous variables. And these are determined within the model. So that means other variables in the model affect those variables. On the other side, there will be some exogenous variables. So exogenous variables means that you take them as given. Okay? So they are not determined within your model. So that means other variables in your model uh, do not determine these sort of, of exogenous variables. So this will come clear when we talk about investment, for example, or we could think of government spending here, which actually we will do, as, as an exogenous variable. Basically because the government, when they decide to increase uh, their spending, they will do so if they try to, if they want to cut their spending, they will do so. So we will, we will treat this variable, for example, as exogenous, that it's determined outside the model. And keep in mind this, uh, the difference between endogenous and exogenous variables, and we'll come back to this. As we said, fluctuations start from demand, or demand causes fluctuation in output, changes in output in the short run. We already looked at the data and know that the, there are four components of the GDP, from the demand side, consumption, investment, government spending, and net export. So these are the four main components of the GDP, again, from the demand side. So we're looking at expenditures, basically. So how much household spend on consumption, how much firms spend on investment, how much the government spend, how much uh, the difference between the X and, and IM, or the export and imports, which is we call the net export. So let's call the total demand for goods uh, Z, which is equivalent to how much we spend in consumption, again, so how much households spend on consumption, how much they spend on goods and, and, and services, plus I, which is investment, plus G, government spending, plus X minus IM here, which is export minus imports, so both together means net export. Again, this is exactly what we saw in the data. So the, the, the first table we looked at and the second table, if we wanted to compose this GDP from the demand side into components, these are the four components we're looking at. We're looking at how much households spend on consumption, how much firms spend on 
uh, 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 investment, uh, how much the government spending, and also the uh, net exports, the difference between exports and, and imports. So for now, we will assume that a closed economy where there's no export or import. So this part equals zero. This part of demand where Z equal or equivalent to C, consumption plus investment plus government spending only. So we just assume that this is a closed economy, so we wouldn't have uh, export and imports will equal zero. So uh, that means this equation here or this uh, identity here define total demand for goods. 